Hi, I'm Harry Packwood with Idaho CDL Training, and today we're going to go over a pre-trip vehicle inspection for a commercial vehicle. This is going to help you on the skills test for the pre-trip portion. We're going to do this as outlined in the Idaho CDL manual. As you're approaching the vehicle, the first thing you want to do is look for leaks on the ground underneath the truck. Also, you want to see if the truck is leaning to one side or the other, which may indicate a flat tire or a problem of some kind. First, we're going to check the engine compartment. We're going to start with the hoses. You want to check your hoses to make sure that they're tight, there's no leaks, there's no cracks, and that they're on there firmly. We're going to check all of our hoses and all of our connections, and then we're going to go to the radiator. And make sure that it's not leaking, that it's securely mounted, and also check the shroud to make sure that the shroud doesn't have any cracks and it's securely fastened. We're also going to check the, the fan to make sure every blade is present and there's no cracks or missing pieces out of the fan and that it's tight on there. Next, we'll want to move to the belts. The belts, we don't want any more than half inch to three quarter inch deflection. Simply by giving them a tug, we can check that. Next, we're going to want to move on to all the connections that you see here, any electrical connections or any other connections. Also, we have the windshield washer fluid on this side of this vehicle. Make sure that you have an appropriate level. We're going to continue on this side of the engine by continuing on checking the hoses, making sure that there's no cracks, leaks, or missing bolts on the connections. Next, we'll want to check the alternator. We want to check the alternator, make sure that it's securely fastened, that no wires are missing, and that they're securely fastened, and that the belt has no more than half inch to three quarter inch deflection. Next, we'll want to check the engine oil to make sure it's at appropriate level, and also the engine coolant to make sure that it's at an appropriate level. We'll also want to check the power steering fluid to make sure that it's at an appropriate level, and check the hoses coming out of the power steering unit to make sure they're securely fastened, not leaking, and there's no cracks in the hoses. We'll also want to check the water pump. We're going to look to make sure that the belt is securely fastened if it's belt driven, and if it's gear driven, we're just looking for leaks on this one is belt driven, we will check for leaks and make sure that it's securely fastened. We'll also check the air compressor to make sure it's securely fastened, that all hoses coming to and from it are securely fastened, there's no leaks, and there's no cracks in the hoses, and no missing hoses. Next we're going to move on to the steering. We're going to check the steering column and make sure that it's not loose and there's not too much play, that all the U-joints are securely fastened and properly greased. Next, we'll go down to the steering box. We're going to make sure that the steering box is mounted properly and then it's not leaking. Next, we'll, go to, we'll check the pitman arm. We're going to make sure that it's securely fastened and that, there's all, that all the castle nuts present with the cotter pins. We'll go down to our steering linkage and make sure that everything is, again, securely mounted, that all the castle nuts are present with the cotter pins. Make sure that this, the, the leaf springs are securely mounted to the truck, that all the bolts are present that any cotter pins are present as well. We're going to check the springs to make sure that they're all present. They're not cracked and there's no missing springs. We'll also want to check the U-bolts to make sure that they're present and properly tightened. Next we'll want to check the shock. Make sure that it's not leaking and that it's securely fastened to the suspension. Next we're going to check the brakes. First we're going to start with the brake lines. We're going to check the air lines for leaks, cracks, and frayed hoses, and to make sure that they're securely fastened at each end. Next, we'll move down to the air chamber. We're, this has a single stage air chamber on the front. We're gonna check to make sure it's securely fastened and functioning properly. To check the functioning, we're gonna pull on the slack adjuster, and we should have no more than one inch of play on the front brakes. Next, we're gonna go down to the drum. We're gonna check the brake drum for cracks or any welds or anything out of the ordinary. Also, we'll be checking the brake pads for an adequate pad. Next, we're going to move on to the tire. We want to check the tread depth of the front tire for 430 seconds tread on the steer tires. We want to check the sidewall for any cuts, abrasions, bulges, or any weather checking. We also want to check the inflation for proper inflation. Check with your manufacturer for your proper inflation. Next, we want to move to the rim. We want to first start with the flange and look for a bent flange any cracks in the flange or in the rim itself, and any welds that could be present. Next, we want to check the lug nuts and make sure that all the lug nuts are present, securely tightened, and that there's no rust streaks, which would indicate a loose lug nut. 
From there we want to move to the hub. We want to check the wheel seal for leaks and make sure that it's securely fastened and has the proper amount of oil if, if you can check it. Next we're going to check the mirrors to make sure that they're securely fastened and that all the mounting hardware is present. We also want to check the door to make sure that it functions and shuts properly. Then we'll want to check our handle to make sure that it's secured fastenly. We're going to move down to the steps. Make sure that the steps are securely fastened. I want to check the fuel tank. Check your holding straps, that they're securely fastened, the bolts are present, and that your fuel cap is on tightly. Next we're going to check the airlines and the electrical connections on the truck side. We want to make sure that they're securely fastened and that there's no leaks in the lines, cuts, or abrasions, and that the airlines are also securely fastened. You're going to follow them over to the trailer, again checking them for cuts, abrasions, or leaks all the way up to the trailer side. We want to make sure that the glad hands are securely fastened to the trailer and that the, the seals inside are not leaking and that the electrical line is securely plugged in. From there we want to go and check our exhaust. We're starting at the top going down and following the exhaust all the way to the motor and we're looking for any soot or any leaks on the exhaust. While we're here on this truck the batteries are located here. We would check the batteries for any leaks or any white residue that might build up that would need cleaned off to make sure that we have a good solid connection. Next we're going to go down to the drive line which is located down below. We're going to check the drive line to make sure that it's securely fastened. We're going to check the U-joints to make sure that they're securely fastened. And if there's a guard located under there, we'll check that to make sure it's present. From the drive line we're going to check the frame of the truck. We want to check the frame of the truck for any holes, welds, or any uh, missing bolts. Next we're going to move to the coupling system. This has a fifth wheel in it. First we're going to start at the, the mounting bolts and make sure that they're all present and securely fastened also by checking the platform to make sure it's securely fastened, there's no cracks in any welds and that everything looks good. Next we want to make sure that the release arm is in the proper position, locked position. We'll also want to check the fifth wheel to make sure it's properly lubed and that there's no gap in between the trailer and the fifth wheel. We're also going to want to check the apron of the trailer to make sure that there's no cracks in it and that it's properly mounted. Next we'll want to go check the locking jaws to make sure that they're locked around the kingpin. We'll also want to inspect the kingpin to make sure that it's properly fastened to the trailer. If this truck was equipped with a sliding fifth wheel, we would check to make sure that the pins are locked in the locked position so that the fifth wheel will not slide during travel. Now we're going to move on to the drive axle. First we're going to check the suspension. The difference between this suspension and the front suspension is the front has shocks, gas shocks. The rear suspension is equipped with airbags on the back end of the suspension. We'd want to check all airbags for leaks, cracks, and to make sure that they're inflating properly. The rest of the suspension we'd check the same as the front. Next we'll move to the brake system. We would check the brake system the same as we did on the front, except for that it's a dual chamber brake system. When the brakes are applied, the push rod should be at a 90 degree angle. When the brakes are released, there should be no more than one inch of play on the slack adjuster. Next we want to move on to the duals. We want to look between the duals for any debris or spacers, make sure that the rims are seated together properly and that the tires aren't touching each other, which would indicate a low tire air pressure. The tread depth is also different. We, want, we only need two thirty seconds of tread on the, on the drive axle. The rest of the axle we would check the same, the rim, the tire, and the hub and the lug nuts would be the same as the front. At the rear of the truck we want to make sure that we have mud flaps that are securely fastened and no more than 10 inches off the ground. We also want to check our lighting at the back while we're here. And also while you're here you can look back up into the fifth wheel to check the kingpin and the locking jaws from this location. Now we're going to talk about the trailer. We're going to start at the front of the trailer. We want to check the header board to make sure that there's no damage to it. We also want to check our lights and any reflectors to make sure that they're present and operational. We also want to check the side of the trailer to make sure that we have DOT tape down the side of the trailer, at least 50%, and any lights and reflectors that they're operational. We're also going to check the side of the trailer to make sure that it's intact and that there's no damage to it. If this were a flatbed hauling a load, I would also check all my straps all the way down and make sure that my load is secure. 
Next, we're gonna talk about the landing gear. We wanna make sure that it's fully operational and that it's greased properly. We also wanna make sure that the handle is in the stowed position and that the landing gear is fully retracted. We wanna make sure that all the supports for the landing gear are mounted properly and connected properly. We also wanna check the underneath of the trailer, checking the frame of the trailer for any cracks, welds, or damaged part of the trailer. If this trailer was equipped with a movable tandem axle, we don't want to make sure that it's in the locked position so that the tandems don't move on you while in travel. Next, we're going to inspect the trailer axle. The difference between this axle and the drive axle is that the suspension has a torque arm on it. And we inspect that to make sure that the bolts are all in place, the cotter pins are in place, and that everything is hooked up properly. This also does, this trailer is not equipped with airbags has leaf springs only. The rest of the axle, the brakes, the duals, the rims, the lug nuts, we would check the same as we did on the drive axle and the front axle. Next, we're gonna check the rear of the trailer. First, we wanna make sure that the mud flaps are present and secure, and no more than 10 inches off the ground. Then, from there, we wanna check the door. Make sure it's securely fastened and shut. Now, we're gonna check the lights on the vehicle. First, we're gonna check the left turn signal. Now we're gonna check the right turn signal. Now we're gonna check the hazards. Next, we wanna check our parking lights. Also, our clearance lights above on the cab. Now the headlights. The high beams are on, and now we're checking our low beams. All right, now we're gonna check the trailer lights. First, we're going to start with the parking lights, or tail lights. Also, we'll check the clearance lights on top of the trailer. Now, we're going to check the left turn signal. Now, we're going to check the right turn signal. Hazard lights. Brake lights. And if the trailer was equipped with an ABS light, it'd be located on the driver's side of the trailer, rear of the trailer. This trailer is not equipped with that. Now we're gonna do the in-cab inspection. First, we wanna check our windows and our mirrors, make sure they're properly adjusted and there's no obstructions on the windows. We also wanna to go to the windshield, checking for cracks, chips, and any obstructions, and make sure it's clean. We also wanna check our windshield wipers, make sure they're functioning and that the windshield washer fluid is spraying on the windows. From there, we want to go down to our instrument panel. We're going to check our oil pressure, water temperature, air pressure, and our voltmeter. We also want to check our signal lights to make sure they're working properly. So we'd check left, right, and our high beam, and our four ways. Next, we'd check our city horn and our air horn. We'd also want to check our heater and defroster, making sure that it's functioning properly. From there, we're gonna also check that we have the proper emergency equipment. We should have reflective triangles, a fire extinguisher, and spare fuses. We're also gonna to wanna to make sure that our seat belt is working properly and functioning. From there, we're gonna to wanna to do a safe start. So we'll make sure the truck's in neutral, push in the clutch, turn the key to the on position, and start the truck. Now we're going to move on to the brake check. First we're going to air the truck up to around 120 psi. Once we've gotten to that level, then when the truck in neutral, push the clutch in. First we're going to check the trailer brakes. So we'll release the truck brakes, put the truck in low gear, and we're going to let the, truck, the clutch out very slowly, pulling against the trailer brakes. And it shouldn't move, and it didn't. Then we'll set the truck brakes, release the trailer brakes, put it in low gear, let the clutch out slowly, and the truck shouldn't move. Then we'll set the brakes. Now we'll release both brakes, put the truck in low gear. Now we're going to check the service brake. We're going to pull forward at approximately 5 miles an hour, push on the brakes, and stop the truck. The truck shouldn't pull to one side or the other. Now we're going to do the air brake check. We want to make sure before we shut the truck off that we have a full tank of air. 
around 120 PSI. From there, we're going to shut the truck off and then turn the key back on to the on position. From there, we're going to release our brakes, both truck and trailer. Once we've done that, we're ready to start the leak down test. This is a three part test. The first is the leak down. Firmly hold the brake on for one minute, timing it. We should not lose more than four PSI for a combination vehicle or three PSI for a single vehicle. Once that is complete, we'll now move to the second step. Now we are gonna fan the brakes and at 60 PSI, the air alarm and the visual alarm should come on. Once that has happened, now we will start the third step. We will continue to fan the brakes until we get between 20 and 45 PSI when the TPV valve should pop out. Good. That shows that our system is functioning properly. Now that that has happened, that concludes the air brake system check. This concludes our pre-trip inspection for a commercial vehicle as outlined in the Idaho CDL manual. I hope this helps you be successful on your skills test for your pre-trip inspection portion. Please remember to just be thorough in all pre-trips you do in the future and that'll save you some headache down the road. From Idaho CDL training, I'm Harry Packwood.